Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain and instructor. Today, I will address the biggest misconception about how a wing produces lift. And this misconception has been taught to students' pilots for decades. And it has to do with the Bernoulli's principle. There is nothing wrong with Bernoulli, but you must use his principle correctly. The problem is, when you repeat something enough times, it may sooner or later be accepted as a fact even when it's not correct. Here's a video from rcmodelreviews.com. It is a coincidence that I'm using this video because this misconception is found in so many textbooks and videos. Obviously, the air travelling over the top of this wing has further to go before it reaches the back than the air travelling underneath. This line is longer because it's got a big bend in it. And so, if we assume that the air at the back and the air, or air on the top and air on the bottom reach the back at the same time, then this must travel faster, therefore the pressure on top is lower. The idea that the air molecules will meet at the trailing edge of the wing at the same time is called the equal transit time theory. But it's not even a theory, but a hypothesis that has not been proven. The problem in this presentation is that Bernoulli's principle is only valid in a single airflow. The wing, however, divides the airflow into two separate airflows. Bernoulli was a Swiss scientist who in 1738 published his book Hydrodynamica, where he described what was to become known as the Bernoulli's principle or Bernoulli's equation. It states when you increase the velocity of a fluid, the static pressure will decrease and the dynamic pressure will increase and vice versa. However, the sum of the static pressure and the dynamic pressure will always be the same. This follows the principle of preservation of energy. And here is how it works. Here is a glass tube with a venturi. This U-shaped tube with a liquid has one end connected to the venturi and the other end to the wide part of the tube. When pressurized air is flowing through the tube, we can see that the liquid is sucked up towards the venturi. This happens because the static pressure in the venturi is reduced. And now let's have a look at the airflow around a wing in a wind tunnel. Smoke is used to visualize the airflow. When the smoke is switched on and off, we can see how the airflow patterns are relative to the wing. And when we slow down the video, we can follow those lines. And that gives an idea how fast the air flow in different parts of the airflow. Here you can see it speeds up over the leading edge of the wing and over the wing, while it slows down below the wing. You can clearly see that the airflow over the wing reaches the end of the wing much earlier than the airflow under the wing. So, what causes the air to flow so fast over the upper surface of the wing? The answer lies in the curvature around the leading edge and the upper surface of the wing. This causes the air to accelerate and the static pressure to drop. Higher up, the air is less disturbed and the static pressure is higher. And this pressure difference creates lift. And under the wing, where the air is moving slowly, is the static pressure higher than the static pressure further away from the wing. This is also lift. I have made a video explaining this in more detail. Please check the link below. And that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.